Hey, what's up? And welcome to the All In Networker podcast. This podcast started because myself, Dan McCabe, had a question. The question was, how do you build a big team fast in network marketing? So I asked a good mentor of mine, Dr. David Peach, who is a Hall of Famer, 250,000 customers in his downline, tens of thousands of representatives, and he just started spilling the beans, started telling me everything, not just what worked in the past, but what he is doing in the future to really grow and build his business. I said, hey, Doc, this needs to be a thing. And he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, we're going to turn this into a podcast. So here it is, the secret straight from his mouth into your ears. Whatever we can do to help you and the industry grow is what we're here for. Let's go ahead and jump right in. Let's get started. Hey, what's happening? Welcome to the All In Networker podcast. So joining me again today, my co-host, Dr. David Peach. How are you doing today, Dr. Dan, let's talk about network marketing. Hey, I love it, man. Um, you know, we always kind of talk about right before these episodes, like, what are we going to talk about today? And actually, right before the recording of this, we did a huddle call with Dr. Peach's team, which we do every single day for a bunch of people that are going through this 90-day run on his team right now. It's called All In For 90. You can um, see we, we've made it available to the entire network marketing community. You can find it on the allinnetworker.com pod, uh, website and just go check it out and see what it is. It's one of the one of the best ways to really um, jumpstart your teams. And so we do these huddle calls, but we were talking today on today's huddle call, which we do every day with them, uh, just about the industry of network marketing and how impactful you can be in the industry, how impactful it can be on your life. And it just went in a tremendous direction. And I was like, man, why do I not record these things? We need to recreate this. So, um, so, 13 years ago, you switched out of chiropractic. We've, we've told that story before on these, um, these episodes, and you made the switch to network marketing. Why, why network marketing? What, what was it? Well, Dan, I mean, what I was talking about earlier, and we'll just talk about it again, it's just, I mean, I, I did the hard thing. I'm, I'm a young man. I'm 18 years old. I make the decision that I'm going to become one of the super professions. I mean, I start out at the University of Minnesota. I want to be an ophthalmologist. That means I, Dr. Dan, you know, oh, yeah. and I'm playing football and I, and I break my collarbone and I eventually start going to the chiropractor. And I'm like, man, this guy's cool. I really like that he hit cool, a cool office. I'm like, I'm going to do that. So I switched my major, you know, and it took me eight years to get that piece of paper that said I can open up my chiropractic shop. And as I, you know, just poured my life into that for, you know, about 12 or 13 years, I got it built up to where I'd always wanted to get it. And then I realized my day-to-day -day life sucked. You know, I had so much stress, so much responsibility, and I'm like, I cannot do this for the rest of my life. And I looked at these other people in network marketing, especially a friend of mine who had income that came in every month, and he just had virtually no stress that I could see, and I'm just like, I want what that guy has. And, you know, I just, I just kept seeing patients, but I used my free time to go out there and build my network. And here I am, I've had 10 years since I sold my clinic. I've had 10 years of time and money. And I look and I go, my goodness gracious, I get this life for the rest of my life because I did something in my free time for three years. I mean, has it been worth it? I mean, what a joke. Of course it's worth it. I mean, it's like, there's no way to compare. If today I was still a chiropractor, I would be seeing patients all throughout the day. I would be reading films tonight. I'd be scheduling people to come in tomorrow on a Saturday. Yes, Saturday, Dan, in Minnesota, where I'd be living still in the frozen tundra, which is hot and humid and full of mosquitoes and riots and everything else is going on in Minnesota. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'd be there. I'd see patients during the day or, you know, in the morning. And then again, I try to sign up some more new patients uh, before lunch. And then I go in the afternoon to Lifetime Fitness to get more people to be my patient. And that was just my life. I've been doing it forever. And I'm just like, oh, I can't do that anymore. So I look at my life now. And it's just, if I want to work, I work. I've got income that comes in every month. And it's been this way for a long, long, long time. That is way, way, way higher than my residual bills. We're always going to have residual bills. But truly having the piece of income that comes in every month higher than that, you just have to dream about that. You've got to really sit back and think, what would it be like? And I used this analogy earlier. It's like winning the publisher's clearinghouse. The top guy on my team said to me one time, it's like we won the publisher's clearinghouse. Because we get income that comes in month after month. I mean, Dan, what if you won $7,000 a week for the rest of your life? How would you feel? You would uh, feel yeah, like, yeah, you. Oh, I'm done working. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness, thank God, I can just live my life now. And that is what is possible in network marketing if you build it right and you pay the price. There's a price that has to be paid. There is no doubt about it. But you can get it to the place 
or you can just take the edge off and not have to do it all day, every day, if you build leaders. And that's what network marketing is all about, is building leaders. Yeah. Yeah. And you mentioned it. We talked about this earlier, too. The, the removal of that stress that can come with that financial freedom, knowing that you can wake up and you do not necessarily need to go to your chiropractic office, your job, whatever it is, every single day, and yet you're financially and time free, has got to be one of the one of the purest forms of joy in your life. Like there is no car that's going to give you that kind of joy. There is no cabin. It's uh, there's so many people, and we were talking about it with the people earlier today. Like I know there's people that listen to this podcast that were listening to our huddle call earlier today that feel that they wake up in the morning. You know, we're recording this at the end of the month. They know the first of the month is coming up in a few days. How are they going to pay their bills? That's what they're thinking about. That's what they wake up with. And that's, it's a painful feeling. A lot of us have been there. I've been there before, you know, I'm sure somewhere back before uh, once upon a time you've been there, but I know a lot of people have been there and they're looking for this to, to be the way, you know, one of the things that I really like about this industry too. And, you know, I kind of was thinking about it as you were talking about being a chiropractor and everything that you built up there and how hard you had to work. One, you're probably making 25% of what you make now as a network marketer as a successful chiropractor. For one, well, the only way you can really make more money within chiropractic or within any other business, being an entrepreneur in any kind of brick and mortar business, is you have to leverage more people. You need to bring in other chiropractors into your office and you need to collect money off the services they provide because you're, you're the owner. You know, you bring in other support staff and people that you're leveraging in order to make more money because you're leveraging their time, talents, and efforts. And you could do that if, as you build that practice, but it's expensive. It is ridiculously expensive. The normal person, they can't even start to sniff at the idea of leveraging other people's time, talents, and efforts to build their paycheck. And network marketing allows us to start being able to do that on day one. On day one, you get into a company, you spend, you know, $100, $500, $1,000, whatever company it is, you're in your representative, you can immediately go out there and start working with other people in their efforts, grow your paycheck. And I just, I, it gives the everyday person the opportunity to leverage instead of be leveraged. Yeah, I mean, Dan, in chiropractic, I used to think about this all the time. This is why I never took a vacation when I was a chiropractor, not very often. It's, I had so many employees and so much overhead that I would literally just do the first three weeks of every month just to make sure that everybody else ate first. Like I get all these bills paid before me. And if there's anything left over, I get it. And you know, now my overhead is so low, if, if anything, really. I mean, it, it, it doesn't have to be that much. I mean, anything almost. And it's just profit that comes in. And I don't have to deal with anybody I don't like. In network marketing, if there's somebody you don't like, whatever, just avoid that person, <laughs> you know? It's just, you know, you don't have that many regulators coming after you, you don't have all your competition coming after you. I mean, Dan, I cannot tell you how many times the chiropractors in Woodbury, Minnesota were turning me in for my marketing or the advertising that my uh, employees are doing out there in the community. They're always just trying to take me down, you know, my supposed peers, it's crazy. You know, yeah. the board of radiology, the chiropractic board. I mean, it's just, it was just always, I felt like somebody's out to get me. I can lose everything at any moment. And yeah. it's like you said, I make way, way, way more money in network marketing than I ever did in chiropractic. And it's residual. I am literally getting paid from stuff 10, 11, 12, 13 years ago. Did I work my butt off? Absolutely. Do I still have to do stuff to keep it going? Yeah, a little bit here and there. I built my organization about as good as anybody's ever built it, in my own opinion, okay? That's not bragging, it just is. You know, right. I don't know anybody in our company that I'm in that's been able to do the things that I've been able to do, so it's certainly not normal, but it's possible. I mean, right. you don't have to make the kind of money that I'm making. I think the average person, if they were making five grand a month residual and it was coming in like clockwork, you could arrange your life and your expenses to get it below that and just be free. Whatever that number is, just be free, because it's worth it. Yeah, I mean, we really do just have a limited amount of time here on this earth. And as soon as we can find that freedom, um, it is, it's 100% worth it, no doubt. And yeah, I think about, you know, your regulators, everything you got to deal with. And aside from the opportunity to being able to leverage other people's time, talents, and efforts to build your paycheck in network marketing, it, when you get in and you work with a reputable company, you work with a company that's been around, the industry's regulated. The industry's actually pretty heavy, heavily regulated in a lot of 
a lot of countries, those companies deal with that regulation crap so that the, the field, the people that are out there building their businesses, building their sales organizations, they just get to go work and you don't have to deal with that. Very, very, very little do you ever have to deal with any of that kind of stuff. And I can totally see that where in the industry of chiropractic or in a lot of different professions, like you need to go out there and your marketing needs to be on the edge a little bit for you to succeed. The, everybody who wins in business, they definitely push the envelope. And I'm sure that's what you did there just because that's your mentality, um, your mentality of winning in every sense that every, everything that you're doing, um, you know, within network marketing, the people that win here, they, they don't need to push the envelope on regulations or rules necessarily. They just need to push the envelope on themselves and going out there and doing the work. Yeah, I mean, Dan, like in, in chiropractic, you have a board. It's like of seven people. And if the average chiropractor is seeing 84 patients a week, they hate people like me that we're seeing 1,000 patients a week. And they do everything they can do to stifle you. You know, and the insurance companies hate all that stuff too. And so, you know, if you want to be a, a supercharging, hard charging, you know, big time successful person, you can't do it if you're in the financial services industry. You can't do it if you're selling life insurance. You can't do it if you're a chiropractor because they, meaning the powers that be, won't let you do it. They'll take you out, you know, and it's just crazy. Over here, you are applauded if you go big, you know? <laughs> the bigger you go, the more, the more the company applauds you. I mean, it's just, for a person like me who, who wants to just do something great and something huge and push the limits, network marketing is the way to go. Certainly you can't do any chiropractic. I mean, give me a break. Right, oh, I, I mean, such a good point too. The, the beautiful part of this industry is that the industry gets it, that if they can help you become successful, they're more successful. And they created this model basically from the top down. The company wants to applaud you for having this massive success. They'll let you walk across their stages. They'll give you rings and bats and jerseys and trophies and everything that they possibly can to recognize you and thank you for your service of being successful because you made the company more successful. But it works all the way down, like I said, from the top down. Now, when you're going out there for you to become successful, that means that you get to go out there and help other people become successful. Like you have to go out there and by building leaders, like you said earlier, you, your business goes up, your paycheck goes up, the company succeeds better. Like everybody's happy from the top down. Other businesses don't like work like that. Like regular brick and mortar businesses, they hire employees and you either need to do just enough not to get fired or you can do just enough to not, or you can do more than enough, drive yourself insane and excel, but either way, you're going to get the exact same paycheck. They don't reward it. Like, I don't get how they don't recognize that. This yeah. industry recognizes that all the way. Yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, in, in the regulated healthcare professions, you know, it's just, you just can't be a person like me that just wants to go big time. Because mm -hmm. again, they will, they will do everything they can do to keep you down because it makes them feel better about themselves because they couldn't do it. But over here with what we do, we only win if we help other people. And that's why I love it. You know, these people on the other side, you know, whether it's your boss, uh, you know, whether it's your company that you work for, you know, the harder you work, the more work you get, like you were just talking about. Over here, you actually get paid what you're worth. I used to think it in network, I mean, Dan, I promise you, I thought this 10,000 times. If it's Friday, like it is today as we're recording this, here's what I'm thinking. I'm seeing patients coming in today and they're saying to me, hey, Dr. Peach, what are you doing this weekend? And I'll be like, yeah, I'll be here in the office. I got stuff I got to do. Because I would see patients on Saturday, I would read films on Saturday, I would go to the gym and do screenings so I could get more people to be my patient. Oh, they're like, oh, I'm going to the cabin. And I'm sitting here in my mind going, I don't have a cabin. And I'm 10 times the person that you are. I work 10 times harder than you. I'm 10 times sharper than you. You know, and it just, it used to drive me mad because I wasn't getting paid what I was worth. You know, there was a serious cap on how much I could earn. And I just felt, I felt suppressed all the time. That's the only thing I think of. I, I felt like this, like somebody's coming down on me all the time. Once I got out of it, once I found a vehicle, network marketing, that allowed me to go and just open it all up. I just, I'm like, I was born for this. So thank God for network marketing. Yeah. And you know, you and I are two peas in a pod kind of in that thinking, because I remember back when I, when I was in college, um, I started buying real estate, bought my first house when I was 19 years old. And um, right after college, I joined a very prominent real estate brokerage. I became a real estate agent and I worked as a real estate agent for three years. And then I went off and opened my own real estate brokerage. 
And everybody's like, well, why did you open a real estate brokerage? And I'm like, because like, if I'm just working as a real estate agent, I'm capped. I'm completely capped. The only way to make more money is to go sell more houses. I need to figure out a way to leverage other people. And at the time, that was my vehicle. You know, this was 20 plus years ago at this point, but that was my vehicle was I need to like, I need to somehow get higher up on this food chain. I mean, really effectively real estate brokerages are set up like network marketing companies anyways. I need to get myself higher up and I need to get people underneath me that I could leverage. And, and we did that for a while, but again, like you were saying, heavily regulated industry, very heavily regulated. And back when I did this, it was, you know, the mid 2000s, 2004, 2005, um, the foreclosure crisis was just around the corner and all of a sudden I'm opening a real estate brokerage and with all the short sales and the foreclosures and the regulations and trying to teach people, it was at that time actually that I got introduced to my first network marketing company and I was like, this, this, this is it. This is everything that I want. You know, it's packaged just the way I want to structure my life, but without dealing with all the crap. And um, yeah, same, same story. I mean, I basically just tried to retell your story as my story, I think is what I did there. <laughs> yeah, Dan, but it just shows you deep people of different professions. Mm -hmm. You know, I was just talking to, you know, yesterday, um, you know, on our huddle call that we do, you know, my wife's got a friend who her best friend, her mom is a big time nurse up in Minneapolis up there. And she said that, you know, a lot of the doctors are just super frustrated because there's no patients coming in because of the COVID. You know, she's talking about one doctor in particular that this individual is for the first time in his life so stressed out that he wants out. And he's stressed out because he's had, he has to go to work every day, but he doesn't see any patients. So he's not earning any money, you know. Mm -hmm. And I know what it's like to deal with the insurance companies. I know what it's like to deal with patients who, I mean, Dan, people are so opportunistic. It, it's just crazy. You know, you got people, I have patients coming in, throwing water on the bathroom floor, saying they slipped and fell in my office. You know, I got patients coming in, we put them through a whole thing of care and they go, oh, I didn't get better. I want all my money back. I mean, it's just like, you have to deal with so much crap in a regular business and in network marketing, you just don't. It's not that it's perfect because you're going to have problems because you're still dealing with people, but you get to pick the people that you work with. And again, it's residual. Right. And again, what if, Dan, if you got one good person a year? What if you trained up one good person a year? Right. And so after 10 years, you've got 10 really good people on your team. I promise you, you're having different conversations in your life. Absolutely. You know, it's interesting. Um, I just thought of this, but a couple nights ago, uh, we had a gentleman come through one of our online systems interested in, you know, the different process, the training and all in networker because they want to build their network marketing business. And I'd say that because this person happened to be near retirement. He happened to be a chiropractor. So he had lived his entire life, his entire professional life as a chiropractor. You could tell that he was well-spoken. He was smart. You know, he had had some success in his life. He, he wasn't paycheck to paycheck per se, but he was working. And we're talking about why he wants to do it. And it's because he was tired and because he wanted to set up, set himself up for retirement, which was something that supposedly his chiropractic business hadn't done for him over the course of, you know, I would say he was probably you know, I don't know how old he was, 55 to 65 years old, somewhere in there. And, but he's looking to like set himself up and retire and get out of that. And while we're on that call, it's like every 10 minutes, he's like, hold on, I gotta go switch this patient to the other room or like hook him up to whatever and bouncing back and forth. But just like your story about the doctor, you just said, I mean, people are getting tired in those professions and they're realizing that there is another way. There's a better way. They're entrepreneurial. They get it. You know, we did that um, show a couple weeks ago on how to find sharks for your business. They are everywhere right now. They are out and they're looking, they're hunting for something. You need to be talking to them. Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt. I mean, the chiropractor you're talking about, I mean, that's a person that's probably just doing it all by himself. I mean, if he's having to switch patients from this to that, he doesn't have a big staff. So you can only see so many people, so you can only make so much money, mm -hmm. you know? And again, most chiropractors that I know, these people are not making a lot of money. And I'm not gonna throw out numbers, you know, to embarrass people, but. I mean, my goodness gracious, you go to school for that long and that's all that you're making. I mean, if you're, if you're a motivated person, if you go to become a lawyer or a doctor or whatever, if you can discipline yourself like that, that means you can discipline yourself to go out there and build your network marketing company. I mean, Dan, I felt like this when I graduated from chiropractic school. I mean, I, I remember when I was an undergrad at the University of Minnesota, all my buddies are going out on Friday night, Saturday night, they're going to all these frat parties. Not me. I'm at home studying physics and biochemistry and organic chemistry and, and anatomy. You know, all I did is study to pass those classes. Then I get into chiropractic school, it's four years, year round study. 
I had to pay the price so hard just to get a piece of paper that says that I can do this. If I would have just disciplined myself over that eight years in a good network marketing company and just done the work, I would have been done working after eight years rather than starting my career. And I remember when I, when I, right when I graduated chiropractic school, I said, they should give me a million dollars for doing what I just did. That's how I honestly felt. Instead, I'm big time in debt. And I got to go farther in debt just to get my practice rolling. Right. It's funny, you know, fun fact, Dan, it took me about, uh, I think about it. I started, you know, my career to be a chiropractor when I was 18. And it took me until I was 37 to get all those debts paid off. All the expensive equipment that I had, all, all the overhead, all of it. It took me a long time just to get back to zero. So I mean, what a joke. Then. What's that? You did it fast then. Well, I did. I mean, I, I paid off my student loans because of network marketing uh, before I even graduated. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that company went out of business, long distance phone company, developed a cell phone. Our company went out of business. So I got a little bit bitter towards network marketing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I knew in the back of my mind it was a better way. So I came, found a real company that I thought would be here for the rest of my life. And the rest is history, as they say. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good topic. And people like, well, they just need to understand what is out there and what what is possible for them. We want this podcast to be inspiration for people that are in the industry that, you know, the success, everything you see, the people walking on stage, it is all really, really possible. You need to put in the work. Things are hard work. You think about what you're talking about right now, doctor, is how hard you work to become a successful chiropractor. All of that schooling, all of the time you put in marketing, working on Fridays to know that you got to come in and work Saturdays and then prospect and then go set up a table at Lifetime Fitness and prospect people there. All of that work that went into it. Had you known that compared to what you did do to build the network marketing business, you put in the work for three years. I contend now that with the internet, people can do it even faster than you did it. But you put in the work over three years and that was three years. That's a lot less than eight years. And that three years paid you over and over and over again. The previous eight years being uh, studying chiropractic and uh, going in and building that business and everything you did there, yeah, you could make money, but you would still be working today. And you want to know what I honestly think? I spent yes. 20 years of my life <laughs> just so I, and I worked my happy little butt off just so I could eat. I want right. you to think about this. I go to school at 18. I sell my, I, I start doing network marketing when I'm 37. It took me that long to get back to zero. It took me that long, 20 years, to get back to where I was when I was 18, back to zero. I did, I did all of it for nothing. I sold my clinic. In fact, I sold three of my clinics, and every single guy that I sold it to filed bankruptcy on me because chiropractic is personality-driven. People were coming to see me, and they right. weren't me. They weren't charismatic like me. They weren't good adjusters like me. So when I wasn't there, patients left. The clinic goes right in the toilet, and they default on the payments because the banks won't give chiropractors loans to buy the clinics from you. So you got to set them up on some sort of monthly payment over a number of years. Every single person I sold my clinic to didn't have the cookies to pull it off. You know, I, I had it teed up for them and they ran it right in the ground. So I got essentially nothing for it. So I do network marketing and Dan, you know, my story is in the 10th month of me doing the network marketing company, I hit the highest rank in my company, which, you know, at that rank, it pays about $50,000 a month with very little overhead, if any. I mean, where else can you go to do that? I don't know. No, I was, um, I was talking to um, a financial planner buddy of mine the other day, and I brought up your story a little bit. We were talking about some of the different things that I had going on, um, you know, stuff that, stuff that I was doing with, with the software and then also the stuff we're doing with all in networker and we're and your story came up and I just told him about it. And this guy, I mean, he, he knows what network marketing is. He knew what it was. But we were talking about it, and somewhere in there, the um, the talk, how much you know, how much do you make on a monthly basis? And I gave him a rough number of what you made. And he's like, "What? He makes that much?" And I'm like, "Yeah." He's like, "Well, what kind of overhead does he have?" And I'm like thinking to myself, and I'm like, "I don't know, like a laptop, like you know, almost nothing. He has to travel to some trainings probably, but it's it's minimal because at that point, that's the nice thing, like." If you have a business, like a chiropractic business, to leverage other people, you need to pay them. You got overhead. It's expensive. You need an office. Here, you don't have to do any of that. You don't have to hire people. Hiring people sucks. I've done it before, and I know that you've done it. It's hard. It's really hard to have that responsibility on your shoulders, not to mention all the, um, all the logistics that go around it. Yeah, I mean, Dan, 
I, I, I'm just trying to think of what my overhead actually is. I mean, I don't have to pay for trainees because the company pays me to do it now. Um, you know, I mean, yes, I have a computer, I guess. And I guess, yes, my business probably paid for it. But I mean, it's just, I mean, what would it be? You know, it's just super minimal. You know, I, I mean, right now we're on quarantine. I'm not having to drive anywhere. So I'm not paying for gas. I mean, it's, it's a joke. I mean, it's yeah. a joke. It's a profit machine. You get in, you get, I mean, you, you get in, you get started for less than a hundred bucks and you can go out there and build what I've been able to build. I mean, give me a break. It, it's, yeah. to me, it's just the greatest. Yeah. All right. All right. So with a fear of us becoming repetitive, because we both agree and it's like, you can get to this point. I've seen network marketers get there before where they like want to shake people like, how do you not get this? Like, I almost <laughs> feel like we're going to be getting to the point here soon. Like, come on, everybody. We keep saying it. Like those of you that get it, those of you that are listening and like are hearing what we're talking about and hearing what the opportunity is, this is for you. Like if we need to talk you into this, it's not for you. But we want you to understand what is possible. We want to share with you the examples of what is possible. So I know we kind of kicked around here a little bit before this call. We're going to start bringing in some other guests just to kind of share their stories as well. I had an idea um, here as well, kind of while we were talking, you know, we're kind of always coming up with new podcast ideas on the fly. And anybody here who has an idea for a podcast or something you want us to talk about, just feel free to email support at allinnetworker.com. And we, we'd love to hear about it. But you were talking about the people that were going bankrupt buying your clinic from you. And I get that you had to provide the financing for them to buy your clinic because the banks wouldn't give it to them. That makes sense. Um, but you said they're going bankrupt because it's a people driven business. Network marketing is a people driven business as well. And I don't want to get into this now. I just want to get your two cents on the thought of the topic and kind of put it out and tease it for one of the next episodes. But I think with one of the next episodes, we should talk about who you need to be to succeed at network marketing as well, because it is a people driven business. Yeah, and it's something, it is a skill that everyone can learn. It's not about how good looking you are. You know, it's just, it's your personality and your personality can be changed. You know, right. because Dan, you know, real quick, I mean, we go through colors. We talk about reds are hard charging people. Blues are fun, loving people. Greens are analytical. Uh, yellows are kind of timid and shy people. Everybody believes that I'm really this red person, but not really. I'm a blue. I'm, I'm more of a fun person. Once I walk out the door and go live my life, I'm a blue, but I pretend like I'm red when I'm doing business because right. people want to follow that person and, and not somebody else. So again, I just think that it's something that everybody can do if they really want to do it. Yeah. And you're 100%. It can be a learned skill and it's really about learning and understanding who you are and who other people are and working to, working from that perspective. So I don't want to get too deep into it right now. We're going to save it for the next episode. Um, we'll go ahead and wrap up here. I appreciate everybody for jumping on the All In Networker podcast today. And uh, we look forward to hearing you guys, hearing from you guys to support at allinnetworker.com. And uh, please rate, subscribe, review this podcast. We'd appreciate it so much. Thank you, thank you. And we'll see you next time. Hey, hey thanks for listening to the All In Networker podcast. Dr. David Peach and I greatly appreciate it. If you receive some value or you know somebody that would receive some value, please share this episode with them. We want to pick up the entire industry and help serve the entire industry of network marketing. We believe that when other network marketers win, we all win. So on top of that, if you'd like to check out some of our free trainings, you can go to allinnetworker.com. Otherwise, please just rate, subscribe to this episode, this podcast, wherever you listen to podcasts. We'd greatly appreciate it. And until next time, thanks a lot.